Hey, what's up? Welcome to Pull My Focus, adventures in the world of digital filmmaking, where we bring you the inside tips on making great digital video. Now, I've been using what Premiere calls a marker for a lot of projects that I've been doing lately. Now, a marker is something that uh, is, it's, it's, it sounds like what it is. You mark a location on the timeline or on a clip, whether it be video or audio, so that you can refer back to it. You can create a name for it. You can create a description for it. You can make a segment of, out of it. I wanted to bring you all the information that I found out about it because it's all over the place. Maybe different YouTube videos, maybe the Adobe help section, whatever. Hopefully what will get you in and out of markers as fast as possible, because I know you're here not to waste time. So let's get to it. Markers in Premiere. Now let's talk about the two types of uh, there, there are two places where you could set a marker. Okay. There's actually, let's back up one and let's say what kind of markers are available. Well, there's a comment marker and what Premiere calls a segmentation marker, which are pretty much the same thing. Watch and I'll show you. There are also two other kinds of markers that we'll get into in a moment. Um, okay. So we're looking at our timeline right now and here's my buddy Frank and he's in, and you can see there's all these little dashes already set on the, uh, let's see my zoom, does my zoom still work? Yes. There's these little dash marks, right? These are called markers and these are specifically clip markers. And there is a big difference that you will understand if I teach it to you this way. You have two windows. Remember you have what we call the source monitor. If I double click on this clip, I bring this clip into the source monitor. This is the source monitor. I say that 15 times because this will help you in the future. This is the source monitor. <laughs> All right. And I can scroll around the source monitor and see what's happening in that source clip. This, on the other hand, is the program monitor. This is your entire sequence on the timeline. This is everything. This is everything. Okay. So your program monitor over here, your source monitor over there. Hey, Manu, I already knew that. Get to the good stuff. You got it. Okay. There are a couple of different ways for you to add markers. Okay. Like I said, these are markers. Now these are marking the locations of certain parts of this clip. These, or well, there are none yet, but if I scroll and hit the M key, that's all you need to know how to add a marker is hit the M key. All right. There's also this, uh, there's also this guy right here, which is add a marker. All right. If I click the M key over here on the program monitor, I just set a marker on the timeline. Big difference. Let's continue. Scroll through the program, hit the M key or click this and you set a marker on the timeline. Scroll through the clip, hit the M key or this little guy right here. And I set a marker on the clip. Let's take a look at a clip right now. There's this clip here. All right. And there are currently, are there any markers on this clip? Well, let's find out. Let's double click it. No, there are no markers on this clip. Also, I can't see a mark. You can see a marker show up on a clip. Okay. Now if I click drag, let's find a really good location. Let's find Frank right there. Hit the M key. There's my marker. Now you also notice this guy here show up. This thing here is an indicator to say that your current timeline uh, icon is sitting right on top of that marker. Okay. If I drag it away, that disappears. There's no indication that you are currently on the marker. And this is important too. So I'm showing you all the important stuff before we go into the other nitty gritty. Okay. If I scroll back, you see that little blip shows up to say, Okay, we are currently sitting on that marker. If I double click this marker, here we go. Now I can bring up the marker dialog. Okay, so here's what we can do. We can name the marker. I'm gonna call it, uh, this, call, this is called Marky Marker. Okay, great name for Marky Marker. Comment, this is the best marker ever. All right, so we have the name of our marker and the comment. There's a comment marker that's always defaulted in green. Okay. There are chapter markers. 
chapter markers are cool because, uh, and we'll link you to a video that discusses chapter markers. With this, you can create chapters in uh, your sequence and then create a text file that you can put in the description field on YouTube that will uh, let YouTube know where those chapters are, okay? Uh, it's a little outside of the scope of this video, but I will, like I said, I will link you to a video of someone who made a great video about how to uh, create and format chapter markers for your video upload to YouTube. There's a segmentation marker and there's a web link. Web link is a little bit obfuscated. Web links are only supported in certain type of outputs types like QuickTime. Remember when we used to have a QuickTime video and then you could click it and go to a web page. Well, that what's, that's what this is for. But once again, like I tell you, you're not gonna get that on a lot of your formats, your output formats. Uh, so it's, I think it's in here for legacy. I never use web link markers like that. Um, so it basically comes down to comment marker and segmentation marker, okay? Now, here's the trick about a comment marker or a segmentation marker, a comment marker I click OK, so I'm gonna click OK. Oh, by the way, also you can change the marker colors, which is important for later also. Let's change this marker color to white and hit OK. So now when we look here, we've got a white comment marker. If I hover over it, it shows me the name and the time that it shows up and the description if there is any, all right? Uh, same thing for in the, in the uh, program monitor, it's gonna be the exact same thing. If I double click, I bring up the, uh, the dialog bar for the markers right there. Now, coming back to here, if I alt click on the piece, if I alt click on the PC or option click on the Mac, this marker, look at that, notice it's split in half, okay? This is a, allows us to make it into a segment marker, which will allow me to say, hey, this entire segment here is what I wanna highlight, all right? And as I do that, you can see the description starts to, uh, uh, show underneath. And I can move it around, you can grab and move it around, but this is how you create a segment, and a, a whole segment of, uh, uh, this is a range of your marker, okay? So you can have either just one little point in time or a segment of time for those markers. Since we're still working on the source window, we're still working on the individual clip. And if you look down here, that marker that I just created, that ranged marker is now represented here on the clip. Okay, now, once again, we can do the same thing here, right? If I scroll around um, and I find this blip, this blip means, okay, you're sitting on that marker now. If I double, if I alt click or option click the marker, it splits it and now I can have a range. I can still double click it and I can still type a name and a descript. Cool. Okay, so the reason I was being very explicit about clip markers being edited in the source window of the clip and uh, timeline markers or program markers being edited in the program window is because sometimes people get confused when they get to the timeline. I can add markers in the timeline directly, okay? Now, if I'm on a clip and I wanna add a marker directly on a clip, I'm gonna highlight that clip. Notice I just clicked on this clip. I'm gonna drag to where I want that marker to appear and I'm gonna hit M, okay? Alternatively, I could hit the marker, add marker icon that's right on the timeline toolbox, okay? So notice that marker showed up on the clip. If I want to add a marker just to the program, to the timeline in general, make sure you don't have any clips selected. So I'm just gonna click in this blank space. And when I hit the M key, notice it appeared up here. Markers for the program or the timeline, the general program timeline can be manipulated on the timeline. I can take this marker and drag it and move it. Okay, I can double click it and edit it. I can change its color, I'm gonna change it to orange. Okay. I can also do that on obviously the program window. So I can move this around, I can drag it and move it. I can alt click it or option click it and make it a range. Clip markers, cannot be moved on the timeline. A lot of my editors will get confused because, well, wait, I can't, why can't I drag this? I can't seem to, and you end up dragging the clip 
and then you mess your things up. No, clip markers cannot be dragged on the timeline. They can only be manipulated from where? The source monitor, exactly. So if I wanna manipulate clips, these clips here that are on this timeline here, I can double click it, bring it up in the source monitor, and now I can manipulate these markers, okay? If I wanna delete a marker, I can right click it and say delete selected marker, clear selected marker, or I can double click it and use the delete key here. If I wanna wipe out all the markers on a clip, make sure you highlight your clip, it's in the source marker, I can go right click and I can say clear all markers. Where is it? Clear, clear markers, clear markers. Thank you. So I wanted to make that clear distinction that if you're trying to manipulate clips or if you're trying to manipulate clips uh, markers in sequences, notice this is a nested sequence now. This has got two things in it. You can still see the markers that exist in that sequence, but they are not editable. You have to double click the sequence, which will open the sequence in the timeline. And now I'm able to uh, double click, bring it into the source monitor, and I can manipulate it from there. Now, one of the cool things about markers is that you can give them names and you can give them descriptions. And if you are a user of frame IO like we are, those marker can be uh, exported to Frame.io as comments, which comes in really super handy if you're a user of Frame.io. Uh, let us know in the comments if you wanna see uh, a workflow from Premiere to Frame. And since uh, Adobe recently acquired Frame, it's got, it's got direct implementation in Premiere and After Effects, so that's really super cool. But that's a feature that can be used over to Frame.io. All right, now let's start talking about the, the markers window. Markers, as you can see, is a window that you can reach from Windows Markers. So the way the marker window works is if I don't have any clips selected, right? If I'm just clicked in the general area or if I'm in the program window, uh, uh, it, can make, it can be easier if you just click in the program window right here. I'm in black right now. Here, let me scroll somewhere where there's something and I don't want to be on any clip. Um, that'll show you the list here will be, okay, here are all the timeline-based markers. They're right here. So these two, these two are timeline-based markers. This list has nothing to do with the clip markers. It only has to do with the timeline-based markers or the program, program monitor markers, okay? Uh, another nice thing about this is I can filter based on the color. So if I just, if I click on the orange color, it's going to hide every other color. It does not delete those markers, it just hides them. So if you have a, a color convention of like uh, audio beat time markers are blue and special effects markers are green and other thing, then you can limit this view here. It's really super cool. I can, if I click both of these, well, they both come back, right? Green and orange. But if I uncheck all of them, that's how I can filter interactively, okay? If I wanna look at a clips, list, I click the clip, and now I see all the markers in this clip. And once again, you can still say, give me only the white markers, and maybe the white markers represent ranges. So it's up to you to just def 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 define those colors and what they mean. So I want white markers, or I just want orange markers, or I want green markers. If I click on one, it's going to move me directly to that location in my clip. So as I'm clicking each one, I don't have to double click, just single click, it'll move me to that direction. Speaking of moving, I may want to navigate in this window next or previous. Generally speaking, you're gonna say, you're gonna right click and you're going to go to, go to next marker. And it'll move you to the next marker. Right click, go to next marker. It'll move you to the next marker. Pretty slow, right? There's this little plus sign here and this little plus sign here. And what you can do is you can hit the little plus sign and you'll see, go to next marker, go to previous marker. These little buttons right here. So I'm gonna take and drag, go to next marker right there and go to previous marker right here. 
Click OK. And now I have navigation super easy for my markers. I don't have to right click or anything. You can do the same thing to the program monitor. You can add those buttons if you need to. And there's your navigation. You can use search words to find certain markers. So if you've used in the description, it doesn't search on the, the name of the marker, unfortunately. So if I came to uh, this little thing and I typed best marker, uh, for this particular clip, best, this is the best marker ever, it shows up. This is the best marker ever, okay? Um, so it, if you get a little confused, make sure you're clicked in the right scope, okay? So this particular scope is for the clip, and then I can clear that, and then it shows up for everything. But if I'm on the clip and I type best, it will limit it to the the markers that have the word best in it. A couple of extra tips for markers. I did a full video on using markers for audio to synchronize things to the beat. Uh, I'll give you a quick refresher about that right now. If I grabbed a bit of audio and threw it into, let's grab this guy right here. All right, once again, is this a good one? Yeah, this is a good one because I already have markers here. All right, once again, if I double click this, it brings it up into the source. I can mark these beats on the clip. Pressing the M key. So there you go. All my beats are now marked because I just tapped it in on the M key. You can use that M key as a little boop. Pop, 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 pop. All right, here's a cool trick. If you create program level or timeline level markers, you can use those markers to bring in like a slideshow. So let's say I want to, now this doesn't work for clip level, but it does work for program level or timeline level. So let's, let's do the same thing, but on the timeline, okay, of this song. So we're gonna go. Okay, so we have all these beats sloppily laid out, but you'll get the idea, okay? Now I can go into my bin of stills and my photos. So here are my, here are my pictures that I wanna use in my slideshow. I have all my timeline markers marked out. I'm gonna drag my, I'm gonna drag my, um, my cursor just before those markers so that Premiere knows everything after this I'm gonna use. So I drag my cursor here. I can highlight all of these uh, pictures, it's just still images, and use the animate to sequence button. Click that button. And instead of setting it to sort order, we're gonna set it to selection. Well, I, instead of setting selection order, we're gonna set it to sort order, okay? Which is how it's sorted in the bin. And instead of placement sequentially, we're gonna say placement at unnumbered markers. Everything else is fine. Now watch this, we're gonna hit okay. Bam, look at that, every single slide is set to the markers, which should be to the beat. Pretty cool, right? So there's another way to use markers in a, in a kind of dynamic fashion. So I think that's all you need to know right now about markers. Once again, you can dive in really deep with using markers. Um, check the help page from Adobe to discover uh, a little bit more. I think I covered pretty much everything. And that's your primer on markers. I hope you have a wonderful day marking your videos. Once again, we're gonna link to the video uh, in the description about how to convert your chapter markers to uh, YouTube description chapter markers and make that easier for you. This is Manu, thanks a lot guys. See you next time.